Special effects are a major part of modern movie making and a man who's had a great involvement in this for his lifetime is John Cox. He's now based on the Gold Coast and he won an Oscar for his work with the movie Babe. In fact, his work has been seen in many films worldwide. He also has a special passion for children and stimulating new stars of the future. John, this has been a lifelong passion for you. Tell us how it all began. It all began when I was about 13 years old and I saw an original King Kong, the black and white version of King Kong, and I just thought, okay, that's what I want to do. The next day I went to the library, started to find out all that I could about special effects work, and then started to do plasticine animation films. Looking around your workshop here on the Gold Coast, how do you get the animals right and not laughable? What we have to do is spend an, a lot of time researching every animal that we do, which goes from the muscle structure, the skeletal structure, right the way through to their movements. It, it is so interconnected that we have to get it right and so that it isn't laughable. Now, it does take a very, very long time to do that. We research the hair fibres, the, the way that the hair falls on an animal, or if it's an animal with scaly skin texture, what the scales look like, how big they are, are they all the same over the, the animal. We research from photographs, from videos, anything we can get our hands on. And you were saying that you can't let the audience study it for too long. You let the audience see the animatronic or the puppet version of the creature or animal for a maximum of about four to five seconds. Wow. Now on Babe, we held for a lot longer than that because we had real sheep alongside our sheep and our sheep were so believable that you couldn't pick which was our sheep, which was the real sheep. So you were able to fool the real animals. Very true, yeah. The real animals had no problem standing next to the robot animals. Um, they just treated them as other members of the flock. You've got a wonderful rogues gallery here, including those magnificent Bundy bears. Tell us about those. They're, uh, they're getting a bit old these days. They still look very, very good, and they're a great ambassador for us. They, they were so well received when we made that commercial that the commercial itself was so successful it was kept for five years. We've got um, kangaroos, little joeys from a movie we did called Joey. Uh, we have other polar bears from other commercials. We've got little dinosaur creatures from Gargantua, big dinosaurs from the same movie. We've got some nasty aliens from a film we've just finished called Pitch Black. And some other creatures from another movie we've just finished called Komodo, which won't be released for a few more months yet. Your plan for a theme park here on the Gold Coast is really to stimulate children in the way you got stimulation, isn't it? That's right. The theme park that I have designed, it's been seven years in the making, but when I look back at it, it's probably been 35 years you know, in the making. Um, everything I enjoyed when I was a child, everything I grew up with, the fact that I was allowed to have an imagination to run wild, um, all of these things I've brought together in my theme park. It sounds like this is going to be a very different theme park. The difference and the uniqueness about my theme park is that every child and every parent that comes there will leave the park with a different experience. So we have 16 major attractions. Of those, you only have to stand in line for four. The other 11 will take hundreds of people at a time so you can come and go as much as you like. Would you like it if some child who goes to your theme park is stimulated enough to emulate or perhaps repeat what you've done? That would be a very, very big compliment to have, to have kids go away from the park and keep talking about the park so that it actually sparks their desire to do something that up until now maybe they didn't think was possible. But when they've come away from the theme park, they can see that just about anything is possible and that sets them up to achieve things that none of, else, none, none of us could possibly achieve. John, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.